Today on BRS TV Investigates, will the heterotrophic bacteria in Vibrant work on these algae-ridden tanks? After a nine-week dosing regimen, we have side-by-side -side comparison of our six test tanks with a variety of different algae types to find out if Vibrant actually works, and I guarantee you the results won't disappoint. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we're dosing Vibrant to these six tanks infested with different types of algae in order to answer two questions. One, will the bacteria in Vibrant really clean up the algae in these tanks? And two, Will running a UV sterilizer while dosing have a negative effect on the vibrant bacteria? Okay, so very quickly, what is Vibrant? Well, I'm sure many of you have heard about Vibrant and what it claims to do. And for those of you who haven't, basically Vibrant is a cultured bacterial blend, specifically heterotrophic bacteria, that are fueled by cleaning up excess organics and related algae, which they ultimately turn into biomass to be taken up by corals or removed through the tank filtration. It is hard to say definitively how these bacterial products work, and some are believed to be aggressive enough to actually consume other organisms, but beyond how they work, today we find out if they actually work. We got the idea to test Vibrant after our Red Sea Max S400 became overgrown with bubble algae, and after multiple weeks of dosing Vibrant to it, we saw the bubble algae turn pale and literally fall off in chunks until none was left. So after that unofficial experiment, we thought we'd try it in a more controlled setting using the six Red Sea Max E170 tanks all overrun with algae. Here's how the test went down. When we last saw these six tanks at the end of our eight week UV sterilizer test, they were covered in various forms of algae. Three of the tanks that were cycled with well-established live rock from our storage tank developed a severe infestation of ulva algae, and the other three tanks that were cycled with brand new dry rock, where two developed pretty serious overgrowths of chrysophytes or golden algae, and the third developed some dark brown algae growth on the rock, as well as maintained a slight haze or cloudiness that didn't seem to dissipate completely. At the conclusion of that UV sterilizer test, we began dosing Vibrant to all six tanks based on the recommended dose for dirtier tanks like these of one mil per 10 gallons each week. And near the end of the test, around the six week mark, we ended up dosing twice a week for some of that more stubborn algae. Along with that, we ran UV sterilizers on two tanks, one with the ulva-ridden live rock and one with the golden algae in order to see if UV sterilization reduced the effectiveness of the Vibrant. So after nine weeks, the results are in. Let's see what happened. Before we break down each tank week by week while dosing Vibrant, here's a quick montage of all six tanks and what they looked like at the very start of our Vibrant test. As you can see, each of them have algae covering the rock surfaces, and in some, if not most of the tanks, algae has spread to cover parts of the bare bottom surfaces, as well as on the pumps and power heads. Basically, the worst algae infestation possible, so if it works here, it will likely work anywhere. With that, let's take a look at each tank's progression throughout the nine weeks of Vibrant dosing, starting with the three tanks that were cycled with brand new dry rock. In the first week, we see that during the initial cycle, tank one developed a noticeable haze and layer of brown film and algae growing on the, all the rock surfaces, as well as algae across the bottom of the tank that was the most exposed to the light. In week two and three, we see that the brown algae begins to turn white and more translucent, along with a slight improvement to the haziness overall. By the fourth week, I'd say that the Vibrant has solved the majority of algae on the rock surfaces, which continues to improve in week five, six, and seven, where by week eight, the bottom of the tank and nearly all the surfaces of the rock are completely clear, and the tank itself is noticeably clear with little to no haze to be seen. At the end of the nine week Vibrant dose, it's undeniable that this tank has had a dramatic improvement from start to finish, and I would consider it to be fully recovered. Moving on to our second test tank that was cycled with dry Marco Reef Saver rock, we see that during the initial cycle, this tank developed a hefty amount of chrysophytes golden algae on nearly every surface, with some patches in the corner on the bottom, and some as well as on the surfaces of the pump and plumbing. 
After the first and second week of dosing Vibrant, the golden algae begins losing its darker brown color where the filaments begin turning white. By week four, we see it progressively getting better and dying back as those filaments slowly die back to just a light fuzz. In week five, six, and seven, the tank continues to progress to the point that the golden algae is all but gone from the bottom of the tank in pumps and plumbing. And by the end of our nine week period, it's plain to see that the chrysophytes are pretty much wiped out, leaving a more naturally looking rockscape that we'd expect to see after being well cycled and established. The third test tank cycled with brand new dry rock is next, and in this case, we're also running UV to see if it reduces vibrance effectiveness. Much like test tank two, we see that during the initial cycle, it also developed golden algae and some hair algae that covers all the rock surfaces exposed to direct light, as well as a carpet of the same algae on the bottom of the tank and on the surfaces of the pumps and plumbing. As the vibrant test progresses, we see that the hair algae becomes more prominent and actually takes over as the dominant algae in the tank after the chrysophytes seem to disappear. Yet as we progress into weeks five, six, and seven, that hair algae becomes increasingly thinner and shows signs of dying as it loses much of its green color and begins turning white. So looking at week eight, we see over an 80% of the hair algae gone. And by the end of the test in week nine, it's like the algae was never there. From the looks of it to me, there's just no denying that the Vibrant worked in all three tanks, although potentially less aggressively in the tank running UV, but still worked on three different types of algae. One of which being a type of hair algae outbreak that has probably frustrated many would-be reefers right out of the hobby altogether. Yet after nine weeks, it too was gone. And likely the reason that the UV didn't seem to set back a bacterial product like this is because bacteria populate on the various surfaces in the tank rather than remaining free floating in the water column where they would continually be exposed to passing through the UV filter. Okay, up next is nine weeks of dosing Vibrant to three tanks that were each cycled with well-established live rock from one of our storage tanks, where after multiple weeks, all three blew up with nearly plague-like ulva or lettuce algae outbreaks. Test tank number four is our first tank for this portion, and clearly the rock and parts of the tank and pumps are all covered in ulva. Within that first week, immediately there's a discoloration and die off of the algae that blanketed the bottom of the tank. And to some degree, it looks as though the rock work also loses some of that darker green pigment in some areas. Week two and three are slightly better. And by week four, most of the tank bottom is clear. There's continued minor improvement in weeks five, six, and seven, where more bare surfaces of the rock begin peeking out. Then in the final weeks eight and nine, we start to see those bare surfaces begin growing coralline algae and the larger patches of ulva continue to turn translucent and less dark green, possibly indicating that it's dying back. At the end of the nine week test for this tank, I'd say that there was a significant reduction overall, but the Vibrant didn't solve the ulva issue entirely. However, there's a good chance that it may win eventually if the test and dosage continued or with combined other efforts. Up next is test tank five, which starts out in week one with a few different stages of ulva growth that's primarily isolated on the surfaces of the rock. As we progress through multiple weeks leading up to around week five, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of changes happening, but there is some discoloration of the ulva in certain spots, but not in others. Then starting in week six, we see the algae landscape start to shift where some spots on the rock actually get darker in color and some new type of algae begins to resurge where it looks to be at its worst in week seven. In week eight, some of the new algae dies back a bit, and by week nine, we're seeing what I would consider to be around a 50% reduction in the original ulva and similar reduction in the newer algae that appeared. Yet again, not a complete eradication of algae after a nine week treatment plan. Moving on to test tank six, and probably the most afflicted with ulva algae from the beginning. Similar to test tank three in the first part of today's experiment, we ran the UV sterilizer on this tank to see if it had a visibly measurable effect on the vibrant. Of the three test tanks that were cycled using established live rock in week one, 
This tank looks to have the worst case of ulva algae where it's completely covered the surfaces of the rock and extends down onto the aquarium bottom and on the UV sterilizer pump body. Much like most of the tanks we tested, within the first two weeks of the test, the existing algae begins to lose its color and become more translucent or white. And by week three and four, we can already start seeing most of the ulva disappearing from the bottom of the tank and a majority of the rock work simply covered in dead and dying algae. There's more pronounced improvement over weeks five and six, and by week seven, we no longer see signs of algae on the tank bottom nor on the UV sterilizer pump. After nine weeks, the algae continues to improve where there's significant improvement from the first week until now, and what I would call to be around a 75 to 80% reduction in algae overall. So we're definitely seeing some impact to the existing ulva algae in these three tanks after a nine week vibrant treatment, yet it's just not as prominent as the hair and golden algae that we saw in test tanks one through three. I don't think dosing vibrant here was a wasted effort, and I think we'd all agree that there were some pretty substantial benefits, but it does seem that some algae is harder to beat than others, and in our specific case, the ulva is harder to beat. In fact, the manufacturer suggests that for tougher algae like bryopsis or turf algae, a more frequent dose is recommended. It seems that our ulva algae is similar, where after watching the results of today's test, I think that if we had started with a heavier dose, I'd expect to see improved results. There's a key point here that we didn't address, and that is that most of us fighting algae issues will likely have a more active role than just dosing vibrant and seeing what happens meaning with some extra effort and manual removal of the algae and a more aggressive maintenance approach, I would be willing to bet that we would have beat the algae in all six tanks. So to answer the first question today of does Vibrant work, I'm rating this one an eight out of 10. There seems to be a clear path to beating an algae outbreak similar to what was in our test tanks by following the recommended Vibrant dosage amounts but again, I feel the results could have been more effective if we put in the effort to help the process along, meaning manual removal, adding a typical cleanup crew, and maintenance practices similar to treating these tanks as if they were display tanks. To answer today's second question of, does the UV sterilizer inhibit vibrance effectiveness? I'd probably give this one a five out of 10 on the reef certainty scale because on the dry rock experiment, it did take a little longer to achieve similar results. However, on the experiment based on live rock and the ulva algae, the tank running UV actually performed the best. In either case, UV didn't seem to prevent results. In almost each test tank, there were still remnants of algae toward the sixth, seventh, and eighth weak points, which brings to mind some reefing wisdom that we've all probably heard at some point. Nothing good happens in a reef tank fast, and it didn't take us one day or even one week to get to this point, so it's unreasonable to think that we could solve it in a single day. So when it comes to treating algae issues in the tank, I believe it's best practice to temper our expectations to a more reasonable time frame. And remember that even though algae can be extremely frustrating, we're not in a race. And more importantly, just because a little vibrant works doesn't mean a lot of vibrant is better. There is a pretty clear and defined path to solving common tank issues like algae, cyanobacteria, or even the dreaded dinoflagellates that you can use on your own tank. And Ryan explains the approach to each of them in these five minute episodes that you won't wanna skip.